From this video, we are getting into the most exciting part of this course, which is using Blue Prism to automate web applications. For this, we will use the website xe.com slash currency converter and automate a currency conversion process where we will give an input value from currency to currency and then click go and capture the result. So let's go ahead, create an object for this website. The object creation is very similar to that of a Windows application, which we saw in our earlier videos. In order to create an object, I'll go to the Studio tab, right click on Objects, click Create Object, I'll enter the name as XE Currency Converter, click Next, I'll enter a description, and click Finish. Now double click the new object to open it in Object Studio, then click Application Modeler. You can leave the application name as XC Currency Converter and click Next. Select Browser Based Application since this is a website and click Next. Then we have two choices. We will select the second option, a browser that is launched from an executable file and click Next. You can see that Blue Prism has automatically populated the path for Internet Explorer. At the moment, only Internet Explorer is fully supported by Blue Prism and other browsers are not fully compatible. So we will use only Internet Explorer for all our web application automations. Then click Next and enter the URL from the website. I'll copy it from the address bar and paste it here. Then click Next and we will leave the default options for rest of the screens and click Finish. Okay, the application model is ready to be built. So let me close Internet Explorer. Then click Launch. Now we need to capture five elements, input value from currency to currency, go button and after we click the go button, the result will be loaded. So we need to capture this element as well. I'll go back and let's start capturing these four elements first. I'll select element one, click identify. You can see that the spy mode is automatically set to HTML mode because this is the web page. And when I place the mouse pointer over the input value and slightly move it up and down, you can see that two regions are being identified. Most of the times it will be the innermost region, but if you want to confirm, let's go ahead and capture both the regions as two individual elements and compare their attributes. So I'll highlight the outer region first, do control click and sort by match column. Next I'll add one more ele element by clicking the add element button then click identify and capture the inner region. Now let's compare the attributes of both the elements. So element 1 is the outer region and element 2 is the inner region. If you look at the element type for element 2 it is HTML edit and for element 1 it is HTML element. Then if you look at the tag name for element 2 it says input and for element 1 it says span. Finally, if you look at the input type attribute, for element 2 it is text and for element 1 it is blank. Which means element 2 has more attributes that are relevant to inputting some text. So we will keep element 2 and delete element 1. Then I'll rename element 2 as input value. And if you look at the attributes, there are a few attributes that have blank value and these are of no use to us, so we can uncheck them. And if I click highlight, it gets highlighted successfully. If you remember from the previous videos, I said our objective is not only to get a unique set of attributes for the element, but also to keep the number of matching attributes to minimum. So let's see if we can uncheck some more elements. We can uncheck these three attributes, input identifier, ID, and parent URL. And if I click highlight, it gets highlighted successfully. Now let's click the match column and sort it again and now we have only five attributes that are matching. The path refers to the DOM path of the element, in other words the document object model path. It is basically the hierarchical position of the element within the HTML tree. For example, the path HTML slash body1 slash table2 refers to the second table element declared under the first body element which is declared under the HTML element in the document object model. So this attribute nails down the exact element. 
So even if you uncheck all the other attributes and click highlight, it will still detect the element successfully. So you may ask me why we need to check the other attributes. Well, that's a valid question, but it is always safer to match the state and type of the attributes to ensure that the input type is text and not a checkbox or dropdown and the field is enabled and not grayed out, etc. Because in the future, if this website decides to put some other input type like a dropdown or a checkbox, our process will at least return an error stating that the text field it is looking for is not available and it will not try inputting the text into a field which is not a text field. Alright, so let's click apply and then add the next element. We click identify then move the mouse pointer up and down slightly to ensure that there are no other regions like we had for the input value field and do control click. Then let's uncheck all the attributes that don't have any value and we will also uncheck the ID and parent URL. It is always a good practice to exclude any URL related attributes because the URLs may change anytime. I'll click the match column again to sort then click highlight to see if it is getting highlighted. Yes it is getting highlighted. So I'll rename it as from currency and click apply. We'll add the next element for the to currency field. Click identify, highlight and control click. We will repeat the same process what we did for the previous element. Uncheck all the blank attributes, then uncheck ID and parent URL, sort by match column and click highlight. Okay, it is highlighted. Rename the element as to currency and click apply. Now if you compare the from currency and to currency, you can see that the only change is in this path and that to only one section which is the span. And if you check the input value, only the class name and the path has changed from the other two attributes that is from currency and to currency. If we uncheck the class name for all the three elements, the only difference in the attributes of these three elements will be the path and that to only the span number. So this is definitely a good candidate for dynamic attributes. For now we will capture them as individual elements but you can try using the dynamic attributes. <laughs> that will be your homework, okay? Alright, so let's capture the next element which is the go button. I'll click add element, click identify and if I move my mouse over the go button and move it slightly up and down, you can see that there are two regions. As we did before, let's capture both the regions so first I will capture the outer region, add one more element, click identify and capture the inner region. Now if you compare both these elements you can see element 1 has the tag name button and element 2 has the tag name SVG and then element 1's class name is UCCGO button while element 2's class name is UCCGOBTNIMG which stands for button image. This definitely means element 1 is the button and element 2 is the image inside the button. So we can delete element 2, rename element 1 as go button, uncheck all the blank values, uncheck parent URL and ID, then sort by match column, click highlight and then click apply. Finally, the last element we need to capture is the result. So we will go to the web page, click the go button to display the result. Then go back to application modeler, add element, click identify. And when I place my mouse over the result, it identifies exactly the number. I'm happy with that. So I will do control click to capture it. Now I'll uncheck all blank attributes and the parent URL as well. You can see here that the parent URL is very specific to this search result. It says the amount is 1, from is USD and 2 is INR. Now if we leave it checked and then if we search for a different amount or currency, this URL is going to change and Blue Prism will not be able to identify it. That is the reason why we should always avoid URLs. Okay, now if I click highlight, it is getting highlighted successfully. I'll sort by match column, click apply and OK. 
All right, so we have successfully captured all the five elements we need to build our object. Let's go ahead and save this object. And we are done. In the next video, we will start creating the action pages to interact with each of this element.